everyone, it's Anna from Blastburn Radio. It's PvP Team Builder time. So this is week four PvP. And we've had a pretty rough go of PvP this season. Week one, we didn't have any Pokemon. Week two, we lost four Pokemon coming into the week. We made some critical mistakes in doubles. That wasn't great. Week three was our best showing. Um, played some really solid games. Didn't manage to pull any out, which is... Unfortunate, but we've at least been improving week to week to week, which is good. Um, we had some good stuff happen this week, uh, namely that we got some more options. Nobody died. <laughs> A bunch of Pokemon evolved, which is really, really exciting. And as you can see on the screen right now, I'm looking at London uh, and trying to figure out what is going to go for Bulldoze. And I, I think it's... I think it's going to be Crunch, which is unfortunate. I would like to get rid of Strength for this. Hmm. We'll get rid of Return. I don't want to lose Crunch because getting it back will be problematic and we won't be able to do that till later. Okay, let's take a look at what we what we have for the week. And the Pokemon that are coming with us. <clears throat> uh, first off is Samsara. He evolved this week and he now knows Mystical Fire, which is fantastic. Additionally, he learned Psyshock this week um, and we taught him Grass Knot. Now, Grass Knot isn't going to be a huge helpful thing this particular week. Uh, it just isn't, which is uh, unfortunate. But having a way to at least hit water on a switch in is is good, uh, particularly also for uh, ground and and rock types, uh, which also threaten Samsara. So fantastic! We still have our light screen on here. All in all, we we like that. Um, number two, Carmelite is coming along. It's been our kind of trusty mega. Um, thus far, considering that our Bulba Baby died a terrible death early in the series. Um, still knows uh, most of the same learn set, but now knows Rock Tomb, Crunch, Aerial Ace, and Bulldoze. Having Bulldoze allows us to threaten some some Pokemon we, we really couldn't before, or in, in a much uh, better sense. So we're, we're bringing this along. We're actually bringing two... Megas in our eight group team so that neither Celeste or Steven are sure which we're bringing to their match, uh, which is beneficial to us. We picked up a Chansey this week, but unfortunately, Chansey is level 38. It's level 38 and can't really uh, join us this week. Uh, Nuit will be joining us later. We also got a Gabite and Fierce. Fierce was a contender to come this week as well, uh, particularly because Sandvale uh, will help help protect him uh, when Hippowdon, when London, sets sand, which is fantastic. It's got a good attack stat at 100, um, but overall, most of his other stats are not necessarily in the greatest place as compared to these fully evolved Pokemon. Um, and granted, like stats that you don't use much aren't everything but we already got a lot on the team uh, that's that's vulnerable to um, vulnerable to something like water uh, or grass and granted goodbyes dragon typing does help with that a bit but this, we, we would rather have some other options here this week uh, which is great uh, fame is coming fame's been really good for us fame is it brings that intimidate which we like a lot um as access to charm bulldoze thunder wave and return uh, we anticipate there's a stunky coming this week or a, a skunk tank um we we're anticipating a switch in if fame comes out and we need to be able to bulldoze that thing on the way in uh anticipated hit so that's going to be really great additionally uh thunder wave it's, it's fantastic um and Charm has been really good at shutting down physical attackers. 
In return is just always good to have. Hippowdon London is coming along. You saw him earlier. He knows Strength, Bulldoze, Crunch, and Yawn. I, I, I seriously considered giving him Rest Talk this week, but being unable to get rid of Strength really really limited that because I, I really need some of these moves on here and just not being able to get rid of Strength was a problem. Uh, da, 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 carrying that Leftovers, which we picked up this week. Octillery Sargasso is a new, hello cat, is a new member of the squad. We got him this week in Azure Bay, I think. That sounds right. Um, and the nice thing about Octillery is he's got a really decent special attack stat. The cat is coming to assault the mic. I'm so sorry for any audio problems. <laughs> um... Sargasso gets a ridiculous amount of coverage for like a, a, re a rego old water Pokemon. Um, it's not fast, but there are a couple things about Sargasso that we really like for this week. Number one is its ability in suction cups. Um, can't, can't blow this baby away, which it normally is not a problem, except that uh, Celeste has a Skarmory that all it does is blow things away all day, every day, which... Is not fantastic. So that's number one. Number two is the coverage. Compared to our Psyduck, Joy, who is also very good. There's just more coverage options. We get more bang for our buck. Joy is faster. And, and that's a thing. But much of our team is middling to fast speed. So it's okay for us to have a couple bulky Mon in there that go last but can really, really do some shit. Some predicted hits here are going to be really good. Um, currently knows Psy Beam, Aurora Beam, which ain't no Ice Beam, but it ain't bad. Surf. <clears throat> and here's the important one. It knows Charge Beam. So not only can it come in on Skarm and uh, not get blown out of the battle, um, it can threaten and boost, which is... It's really important. <laughs> So that's really good. Just all in all, happy with the Sargasso, uh, Sargasso pickup. I'm hoping it's going to do some work for us tonight. It might not. I'm going to be real for you. It might not. But I figured it was worth trying. And I spent the time to EV train it to be pretty fucking bulky. TBH. Um, new member of the squad, Echo, the Mega Medicham community submitted egg. Pure power, adamant. Uh, currently knows Ice Punch, Psycho Cut, Fake Out, and High Jump Kick. I actually think that we are going to keep this list of moves. Um, one of the things about Mega Medicham is its learn set is very good. Um, it can learn a lot of stuff uh, via Move Tutor and TMs. Uh, it can learn like every kind of punch. It can learn Poison Jab, which we have access to, but there aren't a whole lot of fairies running around, so it hasn't been of the utmost uh, concern. Um, but yeah, all in all, Mega Medi, we digging it. We digging it real good, which is fantastic. It's, I mean, it's it's Medicham. It's not the fastest line in the world, but it's... It's got good coverage. It's going to hit like a brick house. Uh, we're definitely going to bring it. Uh, relatively new addition to the team, though. Was here for all of this week and the end of last week. Falconer, the Star Raptor, who got evolved. Uh, Intimidate. Uh, currently holding the, the Silk Scarf. I don't know if that's actually going to be the case when I throw this lad into battle. But um, another Intimidate option. Gut Priority. Has stab and aerial ace. I'm not running fly for PvP. Uh, stab return. It also has close combat. Falconer. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. Falconer exists to kill Snorlax. Like it comes in, intimidates, lowers its attack, and close combat will just fuck it up. Um, which is great. We need we need options like Echo and um, Falconer to deal with Snorlax. The key to beating Celeste for all three weeks has been getting through her walls. So you get through her walls. 
and none of us have really been able to do that like decisively um and it's it's been a problem but i got some wall breakers in here and i'm hoping that we have the right combination of them to to make that shit happen um what's what's really scary on the week is i did not bring goodbye this week and we are absolutely going to find out if that was a, a good or a, a bad call because <laughs> um, both of my opponents have good bites as well. We're going to end up with a three chomp game, y'all. And that is, that sucks, to be totally honest. I picked up, I was the first one to complete this section in gameplay as we were prepping for the week. Uh, I picked up a gibble. On Route 13, and I was so, so pumped. It's a one in five chance. Um, what we didn't anticipate when this was going on is that Arena Trap is banned to Ubers in this generation um, on Dove Trio, and so it doesn't count as a valid encounter because it's unusable under our rule set, and that resulted in um, some of our other competitors picking up a gibble as well, which which sucks. It's it's such a hype encounter. <laughs> it's such a hype encounter. We've had such a shit season. Uh, it would have been really really nice to have have the one and the only Garchomp, but such is life, baby. Like we've done three Crobats, we've done three Gyarados. Now I guess this this season is three Garchomps. But I didn't bring mine this week. Because while Gabite does a lot of the things that Garchomp can do and reasonably well, uh, doesn't have access to a lot of the moves that would make it really competitive right now. Uh, in addition, it's not fully evolved against teams that are mostly, uh, if not completely, fully evolved this week. And uh, to boot, we have some good we have some good counter options, which is fantastic. So I figured at least this week there'll be no Gabite, but I'd be a crazy person if I didn't bring Garchomp in two weeks. So. We'll, we'll see what happens. Roserade. Rose is coming this week. No surprise. Rose has been unbelievable for us. Look at that special attack stat. Look at that speed stat. It's fast. It's bad. It just fucks things up. Um, I really wish that I had Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave instead of Venushock. But it is what it is. Um, we got Grass Whistle, Stun Spore, Venushock, and Giga Drain. Rose has been very reliable for us like reliable neutral damage which is really great um i sorry i'm like huffing and puffing thinking about all the crap that's coming this week but this is the squad y'all um individually against certain folks let's just take a look here at what people are bringing uh this week Steven has locked in Chestnut Ponyard uh I don't know <laughs> Nitto Queen Meowstic Gyarados Goodbye and Skuntank um and now you can see why why picking up Bulldoze on a couple Pokemon is pretty important there's some poison in here that needs to be dealt with uh picking up that charge beam for Gyarados was really important uh, having an answer for Chestnut and Ponyard is really important. Like, I think we have some good stuff in here to take care of that. Um, Celeste, way more scary. Currently running either Mega Charizard X or Mega, Char uh, Mega Venusaur uh, with the egg pickup this week. As well as uh, Raichu, Skarmory, Breloom, which has been so good good for her. Florges, Gabite, and Snorlax. Celeste is a really fucking scary team. And it is, is not hampered by a bunch of shiny bullshit. So, Celeste is the person to beat this week. We'll see if we can manage to, to get that done. But, I think that both... Both Samsara and... Sargasso are going to see play against Celeste. I think Staraptor is, is going to be coming along. Um, everybody else is kind of up in the air. Uh, I think Echo is probably going to make a debut against Celeste this week. That leaves me with two slots. And then the question becomes, 
you know, what what do what do I bring along? Do I bring Hippowdon, who's very very defensive? Do I bring Granbull? I think Rose has to come in case there's a floor just problem, uh, for sure. And then the question is between between these two. Um, I'm really loath to bring Carmelite against Celeste because we're already going to be bringing Star Raptor and <sighs> Stealth Rock Shell. It's been a problem for us all year. We get no no way to take care of it. So the more I can minimize the Stealth Rock damage on my team, um, the better. I think it'll. I think it'll probably be Granbull instead of Hippowdon for Celeste. It could be different. It's entirely possible I'll change my mind at the last minute. But I think that that's going to give me the best options. Against Steven? Against Steven, I think Carmelite might still be coming. What's Steven got in here? Yeah, Chestnut takes quad damage from from flying. The scary thing with Steven is Ponyard and Defiant. That that is a huge issue for us. Um, Sucker Punch really fucks up our Fire Pokemon, which is not fantastic either. I think that legitimately. Our Octillery might have to be a a key piece of a, a lot of this. And we can be guaranteed that Gabite and um, Odno will be there. Um, so, like, that's something. Two of those Pokemon are, are spoken for. Uh, having a way to deal physical damage to Odno uh, on fighting is going to be important. Uh, dealing with Gabite is going to be important. I actually think if, if that's the case, we end up bringing um, <laughs> we end up bringing Metachamp. I, I think what's fascinating about that is the idea of bringing both Aerodactyl and Metachamp, but leaving Aerodactyl as as Mega, um, and giving Metachamp the Choice Scarf to get in there, surprise Gabite, uh, and ice punch it out of existence if if we gotta <clears throat> yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think that might be might be the play the rest of this stuff who knows there's still a freaking meow stick in here which i'm not i'm not excited about we got this the scun tank i feel like the scun tank's gonna make an appearance fame has been really good for us and steven knows how much i like fame um, having a really solid poison switch in, I think, would probably be fantastic uh, for him to bring along against us. Nidoqueen Queen is interesting. I will never underestimate a Nidoqueen, Queen, and they can learn a lot of moves. Like, whatever ends up... <laughs> if he brings it, it's going to have coverage for days. Um, so we have coverage for days. Again, Octillery, I think, is a great bring against Steven here. Mm, I gotta be careful with the Intimidate users in this place because of Ponyard. Ponyard can go just out of control because <clears throat> that thing is going to have a goddamn choice band. Like 100%. Which is gross. And I don't have anything that resists dark. So bummer. But Hippowdon can deal with, with that pretty well. Um, the key is going to be keeping him out on healthy enough to deal with all that. Anyways, I think you get the idea of what we're looking at. Um, I think we have some good options this week. We'll see if that pans out. What's the worst that can happen? I can lose two more PvP matches. It'll be like the rest of the season, right? <laughs> um, 
hopefully more, less less errors on my part than in the last couple of weeks. Well, week two in particular. I've I made some serious mistakes in doubles in week two. Um, I feel like I le made less errors in week three in singles. So let's see how it goes. I guess you'll you'll know soon because <laughs> you probably listen to the podcast already. But anyways, I'm gonna get going. Uh, have a good one. Hey y'all, it's Anna from Blastberg Radio. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on our journey through the Kalos region. If you want to make sure to keep up to date on all the gameplay for Blastberg Radio Season 8, you can do so here on YouTube and only on YouTube this season. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Maybe give us a like if you enjoyed the video. And additionally, if you want to make sure you don't miss a single video, you got to hit that bell. That's the way YouTube works. I don't make the rules. From all of us here at Blast Burn Radio, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for loving our show. And we will see you next time. Bye.